Now it's time for another Board Game Brawl preview with Nick Meanahan, sponsored by BoardGameBliss.com. Hey folks, today we're going to take a look at a game that is currently seeking funding on Kickstarter. That game is called Agents and Operatives and is from the company Everything Epic Games. Now, if you like what you see throughout the rest of my preview video, I'm going to encourage you to go to the official Kickstarter project page for Agents and Operatives. There's going to be a link up in the top corner of your screen as well as down in the description section underneath this video. Those links will take you to the same place, the Kickstarter page. Find out more information than I could possibly tell you here and hopefully you'll consider backing the project. Now, Agents and Operatives is a competitive game but it's a team-based game. You are trying to, uh, through worker placement mechanisms, you're trying to outsmart the other teams of secret agents that are walking around in this different city, going to different locations, trying to arm themselves to take out the other agents. You have to worry about the terror track increasing and just sort of expediting the situation. Things are getting more and more tense as time goes on. You get secret agent weapons and gadgets and all types of different things in order to take out your opponents. But... You need to figure out who your opponents are first. That's a big crux of the game. So let me go ahead and give you a brief look at how the game is played with a prototype version. So keep that in mind. A lot of what you see here may change in the final version. Then we're going to come back. I'll give you my final thoughts. Agents and Operatives is a competitive team-based game for up to eight players. Players take control of different sections, which are pairs of meeple units that you'll use in worker placement style gameplay, but you will be part of a larger team. There are three such teams, and each one has a different goal to complete in order to win the game. Agents are trying to identify and destroy all of the operatives. Conversely, operatives are trying to identify and destroy all of the agents. Mercenaries will have different objectives depending on the number of players and whether or not they've been decimated. They may have to win selfishly or win together with another faction. For setup, lay out the different zone tiles, either deterministically or randomly. Depending on the number of players, some worker placement locations will have to be blocked off. Each player gets two meeples of their color, representing their section. Another pawn of the same color will go on the damage track. When a player's section is dealt damage, record it here. If you ever reach 15 damage on the track, your section is decimated. Underneath the damage track is the terror track. This escalates every round and will start giving escalating amounts of damage to every attack as the game goes on. There are also intel tokens and other meeples and pawns used only for special abilities. Finally, determine how many agents, operatives, and mercenaries you will have in the game based on a chart in the book. Take the appropriate cards, shuffle them, and deal one out to each player. These must be kept secret from every other player until certain points in the game, which I'll explain in a minute. Agents must destroy the operatives, and their reveal ability lets multiple agents take cards from one single teammate. Op operatives must destroy all the agents, and their ability lets them either heal all the other operatives or deal every other player damage. Mercenaries get one of four cards, each with a different reveal ability and goal. If they are not decimated, they follow the mission directive of either taking out the agents and operatives or surviving. But if they are decimated and become defunct, depending on their card, they're going to get a new mission. For instance, the Exterminator's reveal ability allows them to counterattack, and when defunct, they must now help the enemy faction of the player that eliminated you, meaning they want revenge. Turns go like this. Each player in turn order will place one meeple out on a location. Once you place the meeple, you may optionally use the location's ability. Then, you may take a hostile action if possible. Then, everyone's going to do this all over again with their second meeple. After a full round of this, the first player marker passes, terror increases, and you do it all over again until one team meets their goal. First, let's talk about the location abilities. There are eight zones, each with multiple locations depending on the number of players. When you place a worker on one of the zone's locations, you'll use the ability. Each location can only hold one meeple. The armory lets you grab weapons cards. Weapons can be used with hostile actions to damage the other sections and move them closer to decimation. They have ranges from zero, which means a zone you have a meeple in, to one, two, or three orthogonal zones away. Drone control lets you move and manipulate the drone pawns, dealing damage or blocking off spaces to the other players. The embassy has one space that allows for infinite meeples to be placed there, meaning it can never be blocked off by just one person. 
it lets you take an intel token. Another of its locations lets you swap meeples with another player somewhere on the board. The facility can help prevent damage or totally shield another unit with the protective shield token. Headquarters allows you to jump through time, allowing you to take a ghost meeple and place it in the following round before the first player acts. The laboratory lets you grab gadget cards. These basically function like weapons and some can even be used to attack, but many of them are discarded after one use and have more general uses. The black market is a risky and random place where you can go to get weapons and gadgets assuming you can't get them through the legitimate routes. And finally, the night room is where you can go to accost other people and either damage them and or take their stuff. After potentially using a location, you may then do a hostile action. This could be several things, including using intel. By discarding an intel token, it lets you know other players' factions if they have a meeple in your zone, then you can target them. They give you one of the three general faction cards secretly for you to look at that is appropriate to their rank. Now this is going to tell you what their faction is, but it won't tell you anything else in particular. For instance, if they're a mercenary, what particular mercenary faction they belong to. It could also be making an attack with your hostile action. You can always use your fist to just do a damage, but you can also use your weapons cards, and your opponent can try and defend using certain gadgets. Finally, one player may use their hostile action to implore their entire team to reveal themselves, and thereupon get their special ability. Alternatively, a mercenary may reveal themselves to get their own ability. Now, if you implore your team to reveal themselves, they are not obliged to do so, but you could ask. If a player becomes decimated and defunct, they are not out of the game. They can't actually do much anymore except for small things like blocking locations so that your opponent can't use them, but they can help their remaining teammates in the best way that they can. And that's it. Keep your team alive long enough to meet your goal. Now, let's get to my final thoughts. I think that Agents and Operatives deserves a lot of credit for taking what to me has become sort of a trope of board gaming in the last few years, which is the hidden role, hidden alignment, team-based situation that um, is becoming more and more and more popular as time goes on. Taking that and not just having it be, okay, we have some cards and I call you a liar, but you're a liar and now we vote, that type of thing, which uh, was an archetype that a few games did very, very well, but now it's just being repeated ad nauseum. Instead, they take that very interesting core of the game and make it into a worker placement game. So they're giving it uh, legitimate strategic elements that make it sort of a hybrid between different game genres. So now it's not just, okay, here's uh, who I am. Now I just have to get this person to lie about what whatever they are or to figure out who you really are before I can target you. You first have to strategize. You have to figure out, okay, it's important that I know what you are, but first I need to get some gear, and I need to try and manipulate the board situation and uh, make sure that my opponents don't get to these certain spots. It's in a typical uh, worker placement way, it's all about not just putting yourself where you want to be, but putting yourself where your opponents want to be. At the same time, you have uh, lots of different options. You have the, the whole drone support thing, which adds an interesting thematic element to the game, but also another option for you to uh, put into your coffer of uh, gear and things to uh, worry about and to worry the other players with and you are constantly just on the lookout for who's on your team and who's not the whole idea of there being a variable amount of teammates based on the number of players and how when you have the odd numbers of teams you also have the mercenaries to concern yourself with who could have wildly different um, criteria to win the game based on their game state and when they're defunct when they have been uh, decimated then you you don't know what's going to happen depending on what card they got if you haven't seen that card you are just going to be totally um out to dry because it's like well maybe if i take the, okay like yeah i'm sure this person's a mercenary maybe they want to be on my side if i destroy them maybe not you just don't know so there's an interesting um while there are strategic elements here that are not luck based you know, worker placement and things like that there is still just that hint of chaos there that you have to sort of wade through to get to the truth that i think makes the game um 
interesting and more uh, um, akin to its forebears of the hidden alignment, hidden role genre, but at the same time having those sort of Euro game elements, which makes it very interesting. So if any of those things appeal to you, you should definitely go to the Kickstarter project page. I think this game could also appeal to people who are more casual gamers as well, because it's really not that complicated and it's easy to get into. But go to the Kickstarter project page, find out more information. You can go to the link in the top corner of your screen, as well in the link in the description section underneath this video. Go to the page and hopefully you'll consider backing the project. That is agents and operatives from Everything Epic Games. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. And make sure to check out our sponsor, Board Game Bliss, where you can find an amazing selection of games from around the world. BoardGameBliss.com. Thanks for your support.